Miss Seely, ma'am, is that you toward the end of this episode of Found? Did you find your way to this episode series, Miss Seely? If you know, you know. The end of this episode was definitely giving color purple homage. I can't wait to get into it. So go ahead on and like up the video while I play the intro. And thank you for dialing M for Movies and TV. Thank you for hitting that like button, y'all. And thank you for dialing M to tap in with your friend, your girl Aries here to talk about this latest episode of Found. Okay, so on this episode two, we start off with Gabby and I'm just like, yo, she has literally learned from the best. We got Mark Goslin, sir, as we know him. Look, I'm calling him Mark Goslin. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce his last name, but all I know is that last week I was referring to this man as Zach Morris. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm about to just go ahead on and start calling him sir. But I will give you a preemptive warning that I, I'm referring to these characters by what I can remember them as until I get to remember their actual name. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Gabby doing her dishes watching this man, the same way that he was, I don't know if he was watching, he probably had technology, but he seems very old school too. Plus this was back, back, back in the day. When Gabby was a young teenage girl, she was 16. I don't know if she, was, yeah, she was 16 when she got abducted. I was gonna say, I don't know if she was either 16 when she got abducted or escaped, but nonetheless, she's going back down memory lane when she um, thinks about Sir giving her this cupcake, it was actually a cake, okay, with a candle on it. And this is like her one year of being his, Gabby. And she, I'm just astonished because it's like, look, Gabby ain't folding. You know, she's still giving him guff and attitude. Like, I don't like you. I'm not going to eat the cake, anime. I'm not going to eat the cake. What's the man, what's the hug? Ike. That's Gabby. Like, honestly, I feel like if it was me, I would start being playing nice by now. Just trying to go along to get along. Because, like, what choice do I have? Like, this man got me now for a year. I definitely feel like me personally, I didn't broke. I would have been uh, brainwashed. I would have definitely been cultified by Sir. And, and I'm not saying it because, like, oh, sir, so, you know, that's Zach Morris. No, I'm just saying, like, after all this time, yes, sir, I am yours, I guess. Shit. I didn't forgot. I'm Confucian. So, yeah, I, I, um, I definitely took note of that part of Gabby. I love Gabby's young version, though. I love them both. Both the characters are awesome to me, but I definitely really just admire the talent of the young actress that portrays Gabby as a teenager. Um, yeah, like I said, she got the acting chops for sure. So once Gabby snaps out of it, we go over there with Guy in the Box, okay? So I ended up calling him a little, little Majors because to me, he looked like he could be Jonathan Majors' little brother, okay? And I wonder if he is. I'm gonna have to go and look into that, y'all. I hope that wasn't too loud in the mic. You know, I get real squeaky when I get excited about something. So there's that, now you know. So, yeah, I'm thinking, like, look, little Majors is in his box, and we see him go to the door with his little hand grabber. I'm thinking, oh, la. Because the, the way that they are chipping away at or slowly revealing the reasoning behind his trauma, I just feel like they are really going to try to hit us with the he-he-how whenever they do reveal, like, what happened to this man. Because we see bits and pieces being revealed about the... um the agents, okay, at the agency, Mosley and Associates, we see bits and pieces being revealed by about the Associates and more and more in this episode, but um, I feel like Little Majors is the only guy or person, per se, that we haven't actually found out, like, more about, you know, because Gabby kind of ran it down that the detail lady is the way that she is because her son was abducted from a bus station. Um, we don't really know much about the other man. And I'm just going to call him the other man because I don't know his name either yet. Yeah. And um, we know what's up with Lacey slash Bella's story. But it's little majors that I feel like, wow, they, they really going to try and hit us with something like very heavy, I feel. 
that's the angle that is headed to so let me know what you think down in the comments like what's your theory on um little major's backstory and the reasoning for his trauma nonetheless we discover like okay he's scared to go outside he must be i was thinking of it and it was revealed later in the episode that he's agoraphobic okay so um he can't get this package that's outside and it's really just like it's got to him and he's like you can tell that he's frustrated so yeah just take note of that so meanwhile we got gabby having a cnn type of conference with joy and reed he's giving me yolanda adams i know that joy and reed is a, a real person but she's giving me yolanda adams i'm like Hello, little bro. it's me and you I'm over now. Okay, that's <laughs> nonetheless. Okay, she's having this interview with Joanne Reed, and Joanne asked Gabby, like, look, so how do you feel about your captive, your captor, your abductor? Yeah. How do you feel, Gabby, about your abductor never being captured? Um, does that cause you to lose any sleep at night or you know, and Gabby like, huh? scared where? Who losing sleep? Who losing sleep? Who losing sleep? Who losing sleep? Gabby ain't losing no sleep, child. And then she's springing on her that, you know what? Because this is your, the 20 years of you being escaped and all the hard, fine work that you do for the community, we're setting up a tip line so that we can find Sir Hugh Evans. Gabby, please, like, Gabby is so stoic, but it's like your, your poker face is really showing right now, you know, or not. Um, and then the police that's, at, that's there viewing the, the interview or whatever, the, the lady was like, you know what? Let, let me stop looking at this before I walk up in there and arrest Gabby my damn self. Because, yeah, it's really giving Gabby that you know more than you know. It's even giving that this man is locked up by the ankle in your basement. Yep, that's all that I got from it, Gabby. Unsuccessful in throwing anybody off. Okay? Well, off. Apart from this backstory, you know, our continuous story, we get to the ever-changing aspect of the show where we get a new victim. And um, this time it's a friend group coming in. They're talking about their friend is a sex worker. The friends come in. They're talking about, look, we got a missing friend. Yes, she was a sex worker. Yes, she should be found. Okay. And when she starts describing her, the friend starts describing her to the detail lady. She's like, and it's so funny now that I'm thinking about it, that they actually had the friend say this to her because, of course, she would catch it. I catch it, too, because I always watch documentaries and shows like Force 48, true crime type stuff. You know not to say no was when you're referring to somebody. I almost thought that the detail lady was going to get hot on this friend's heels when she said that. But she could see that she was genuinely just hurt by Jenny's disappearance. OK, and she made the um, the the common mistake of saying that Jenny was this or that and a good person. And the detail lady was like, no, she is. <laughs> you don't know that anything's wrong with her. She's just missing. She is this. She is a wonderful human being, you know. And so that really made the friend just feel like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to give up hope. Keep hope alive for Jenny. So the friends end up telling the detail lady and everybody else in that glass box about a stalker that Jenny has. And the stalker then sent dead roses and put them on her car. Da -da -da, you know, stalking. Stalking type behavior. And um, so, you know, they're hot on the trails. First thing they do is go over to the apartment because it's a guy there with Jenny's friend. Okay. And he's claiming to be Jenny's roommate. So the detail lady and Bella Lacey head over to the apartment of course the detail lady is noticing all of the details you know she notices like that there isn't anything any remnants of this guy that claims that he's jenny's roommate you know she got tampons out and you know like a man be acting like he can't see no tampons child so that was like a red flag dead giveaway that bro you must not live here because jenny would have been and had to stuff these under the cabinet um or in the closet or in some other kind of decorative box 
to keep you from being uncomfortable about seeing a damn tampon. Yeah, she called him out on it like, look, do you really live here? Are you like really roommates or what's up? Because I'm really not getting the um, roommate vibe based on the fact that you ain't got shit here. And he goes on to say like, yeah, you know what? She, I fell on hard times and she was giving me a place to stay. And, you know, immediately they looking at him now because, baby, you didn't got caught up in the lie. And then the detail lady pulls up the picture or she pulls up the phone and like, where the picture at that was right here? And he's clueless. Or is he? Like, he's just pretending initially. Honestly, I didn't even think that this man was pretending at first. I really thought that they was hitting me with the old SVU wonty wham when they come and give us somebody that they want us to believe is the perp. OK, they they give us every reason to believe it's him. But I know better. I know better. I know this ain't this man that then did this, but I'm going to follow along with it because right now this is our main suspect. And so this had been bugging me. Gabby go back to the house. And once again, they highlight the fact that she got all the locks on the door the same way that sir had it back when she was kidnapped by him and it's just crazy the way that you know even though she has escaped that trauma you would think like damn i don't want no parts of what i experienced there but there's like certain aspects of it that it feels comforting maybe or familiar to her because it ain't no way in the world that i would have all them locks on my door reminding me of where i was at when i was in hell you know being tortured by this man that I don't know does sir want Gabby to be his daughter I'm really confused like by the the dynamics of the relationship that he wanted with her to be honest but I thought that was like interesting the fact that they make sure to point that out and include that maybe it's because Gabby is holding him captive but remember Bella Lacey had the locks on her door too so it's like no place like home for them in a way hmm I guess it is interesting in the way that we all could hold on to certain aspects of trauma because letting them go could even could be even more traumatic oh that's making me sad mm. so gabby go down the stairs to sir and she gives him a folder like look we got a new case i got a new case and i need your help and he start reading it and he immediately slam it down he wants no parts <sighs> sir got his nerve to want to be saying he's not going to help a sex worker because she's filthy and unpure. What what about you, man? See, I don't understand the self-righteous kidnapper. Like, when you just, the Lulu on a whole nother level. Really, sir? And I just put in my nose, like, man, this man got his damn nerve. So he tell Gabby, like, what you going to do? Because if I don't help you, I know you ain't going to kill me. You would have did that by now if you were. And she said, you know what, bitch, I got you. She said, you know what, you show right. You show right, I ain't going to kill you, but I'm about to starve your ass. Yep. Yep, sir. Remember when you were starving me of that little thin layer of craft cheese, fake cheese? You were starving me out of that and a piece of bologna? I'm about to starve your ass because it really do look like Gabby been cooking for this man or at least preparing him a halfway decent meal. If there was me, I'd be feeding his ass slop, dog food. He'd be eating Alpo on everything. This man would be eating Alpo if he was fucking with me. And I had him tied down in the basement. He, he yeah. So Gabby's starving him out. She's like, look, I know another way. Meanwhile, we got Bella Lacey asking little majors to keep up with the tip hotline. So I'm realizing now that Bella Lacey does not know about the fact that Gabby Crazy Ears got Sir down in the basement. You know, she telling Lil Majors, Did you have you seen anything on the tip hotline? Make sure you keep checking it out. You know, he he Johnny on the spot too, but yeah, Bella is out of the loop. Gabby's holding that press conference for Jenny and putting it out there about what happened, you know how it go. So the detail lady is out with her partner the other man okay um they were just casing some individuals they they went by a guy that basically they're covering their tracks with all of jenny's clients so they went by a guy's house that was just like oh you know she's just my companion i just pay her for the companionship because i'm so lonely <laughs> and i'm thinking this man wife dead he's like don't tell my wife <laughs> i'm like sir 
this lady probably already knows. She probably damned and sent you Jenny profile so you can get out of her hair. She's tired of you. Okay, and then we we tracked down a lady. I said, damn, it's a Jenny had women clients too. She was not playing. So this lady ain't she don't want no parts of it. She don't care how much money they try to bribe her with. And then we get this other real creepo. And of course the detail lady is um zooming in on his what they call it? Mannerisms. No, his body language. Yes. Yeah, so the detail lady is peeping him. And she notices a little thingy, like some type of fob of some sort on his um, his little sideboard in the home, okay? So she noticed that, little gadget type thing. And she also noticed the way that he's like digging into the, to the door, the door frame like that. So I guess she is, suspects that he's a bit nervous, but she really can't call it. Um, she feels like he was protective of her somehow. Ooh, okay, yes, makes sense. She felt that. And um, so she's talking to the other man about it. And then she get, she get ready to go. She like, look, I got to go to the bus station real quick. Um, we'll get, I'll get back to you on this later. And he's just like, all right. And she's like, can I ask you something? Basically, like, why ain't you being nosy? Why you never ask me about the bus station that I be going to? He like, Girl, that's my that's not my business, ma'am. I, I don't be asking people business or, you know, I don't judge. That's what he says. But she calls she calls him out and asks him, like, yeah, you're not judging me. But what's up with the way that you judge little majors about his trauma? Hmm. Makes me wonder. OK, so Gabby and her police, her PD crush, this man that likes her, um, he pulls up to Gabby's office and. I'm confusion because it's like Gabby never gives him any play. Of course, it was like a one time thing. Maybe she feels like, you know, it was a mistake. I should keep it pro professional in this environment because, you know, I, I just ain't I just ain't here for that. Or is it that he's reminding her of sir in some way? Because, you know, I didn't been in that position. You remind me of a guy that I once knew and i can't figure out why i don't fuck with you <laughs> y'all on everything that's why i just made that up on the spiz knot but yeah that's what it's giving me that gabby is reminded of him gabby ain't feeling him for some weird reason and i wonder why i really want to know let me know what y'all theory is behind gabby in the police officer's relationship like is she traumatized by this man is she triggered by him or is she just trying to keep it professional and keep it a G, a buck? Gabby goes back to deep in thought down memory lane, thinking about Sir um, and the way that he had her reciting and memorizing and understanding the concept of Macbeth, child. And when he tried to give her this necklace and well, basically she was asking, you know, like I said, Gabby ain't folding. She's never getting comfortable in this environment and she don't let Sir get comfortable in this environment. She keeps it um, very upfront that she does not mess with this man. She don't like him. She don't like the situation and she's not. I'm not afraid to show it. Like I said, after he didn't start me out over a thin piece of bologna and uh, cheese, I would definitely be humbled at this point. But yeah, she's like wanting to speak to her own father. I'm thinking like, damn, Gabby, like, can you pick a different time to ask? You don't waste no time. You don't waste no time. Of course, it's not going to happen now. Timing is everything, my precious. So, yeah, I'm just tripping off young Gabby, boy. She She's relentless. Uh, she's relentless as Sir is, to be quite honest. And it's crazy because he gets a kick out of the fact that oh, she's relating real life to Macbeth. Wow, yes, my daughter is a genius. It's like, man, this man is he crazy. We, we tap back in with the other man. And the other man is with his man. And the other man's man is telling him that, like, you know, I guess... The other man is really trying to get to the bottom of why he has such of an issue with little majors. And his man was telling him, like, well, because you was in that same position type thing and you got over it. So you you're looking at him as if he's weak when really he needs to be given the same grace that I gave your raggedy ass. OK, 
So he's reminded of that. And I, I had to think about it too, because there has definitely been, I mean, like actively with me personally, like the trauma that I've gotten over, I definitely look at people that are still in that type of situation. Like you stupid, you know, like it, it's just not their time to be done though. I mean, I can't, all I can do is be supportive and have a little bit of grace. So yeah, respect to that scene because I know I'll be looking like, couldn't be me no more couldn't be me no more and i really should just be supportive of the person that it is you feel me oh so jenny mom show up to mosley and associates and they get to talking about her she didn't even know the girl was missing she just thought she needed some time so we find out something about the artwork and head over to the museum it's the detail lady and the other man and they talking to the security guard like look do you know about this girl right here have you ever seen her and so security guard is like, yeah, you know what? She used to, she'd be always in here. But the last time she was in here, she was with somebody. And it seemed to be a bad date. Bad date, why? That's what the other man said. And she was like, well, because like he tried to lean in for her kids and she curved him and he stormed off. So, you know, you know, they are on this little dude's ass, which I don't know his name is not important. We're never probably ever going to see him again, unless he appears as a different character further down the line, the way that they do so many times in Law and Order SVU. Okay, why they be having the same? It's like, girl, you was a perp in, in, in season one, episode 25, and now in season 13, you a Vic? We're going to go back to the apartment and question him, because now it's up. Is up and is stuck. Oh, the detail lady is on him. Gabby's on him, really. That's who's on his ass. And they're asking him, like, so what what do you know? How 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 do we what, what's the correlation? This painting gets sold, you get a deposit, Jenny go missing. What's good? And um at this point I'm thinking, like, dang, did he have something to do with it? Partially. He did partially. Tell me why this man, this little dude, okay, done basically bargained with Jenny Stalker, um, who he believed to be Jenny Stalker, who asked for her location on Jenny's birthday. He said, look, I'm going to give you the location. You give me the money, and we're going to just let that be that. He claimed he gave a fake location, but Jenny ended up going missing anyway. He was like, I don't know. They gave her, they got her, they, they did it anyway. And then, you know, I don't know when he pulled out his Karen Uno reverse card, but he definitely did that. Oh, that's when the, the cop came in. And yeah, he tried to pull it out. Like, <gasps> he tried to pull. He was like, oh, they was like, Man, sit your ass. Sit your ass down. Okay. So they got more information from him about this and um they noticed some the detail lady of course notices the little key fob thingy in the other room and so they head back over to brandon's house that's one name that i do know because they said it a few times that's one of the suspects that was on the list so they head back over to brandon's house i wasn't gonna damn because i wasn't thinking it was him because just because he was scratching the wall i just thought man here they go again trying to throw me for a loop but I'm thinking like, damn, it was him. Okay. So we get there. Jenny running in the, out the back window, running, running, running. Gabby tackle her down. Like, girl, what are you doing? We trying to save you. She's like, I don't want to be found. Don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Don't save her. Jenny didn't want to be saved, y'all. She said that she didn't been through so much mess with these stalkers and things that she just wanted to really disappear, give them a chance to disappear and forget about her. Um, before she could return to civilization but she definitely needed a break and was in fear of her life after on her birthday she got the dead roses okay so they're trying to strategize and convince gabby i mean and convince jenny that look there's got to be a better way we gonna find them so that you can continue on living your life girl we got you okay so they convince gabby I'm sorry, y'all. They convinced Jenny to play along. You see what happened when I get too excited? Little Majors. Little Majors is still trying to get this package that's freaking him out because it's just above the steps, okay? He can't get to it. And he's trying to reach it with his little grabber thingy. And um, he goes on and holds on to the side of the wall and 
get out there and end up falling and busting his head because he got so just disoriented by fear okay fear literally had him in a chokehold and it body slammed him down onto that concrete step he busts his head and he is knocked out they trying to call him so that she can so that he can use his little gps locator because now what they're doing is dangling fruit okay they're trying to actually focus on the stalker at this point so that like i said jenny can go ahead and return to her real life so instead of dangling Jenny as bait, they're going to dangle the fool that dangled her in the first place. The one that set her up to get cat kidnapped. Okay? They're going to dangle his little ass. And they got him putting stuff in his car while they're looking around. And what I will say about this little, um, this little actor is that he was definitely playing the role of a ass. I was about to say, okay, he was playing the role of a bitch ass wigger. The way he was acting, boy, I said, oh, yeah, you scared. You doing a good job. I like that. Down come the street, come the stalker. But before we get that, we get the other man come to help Zeke. Which I know his name now. So we ain't going to call him Lil Majors no more, okay? Zeke is still busted up. The other man come pull him inside and ask him, like, dude, what, what's going on? Pull him onto the camera. He got a little towel on top of his head gabby like is every is should i be concerned he's cool so he does his thing with his drones and things and he's zeroing in on the stalker he finds her just as she's approaching um little bitch ass and i'm thinking like oh my god it's the lady that wasn't gonna take no bribe tell me why it was not even her it was security it was marcia 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 it was you. The whole, what kind of mess? You stalking this girl because you was vicariously wanting to be her? I forgot what they said. Was you living vicariously or was you vicarious? Which one was it, ma'am? You didn't need to. You was about to stalk. You was about to kidnap. Gee. I ain't never heard of a solo woman that was going to kidnap another woman just to have and to hold. Now that we didn't got to the bottom of this kidnapping, okay, and this stalker situation, we get back over there to Lil Majors, aka Zeke, and the other man. And the other man is really, he's really doing that. He's applying that grace immediately. And he, he takes a minute and he's looking at the box and he's just wondering. He's like, yo, what's in the box that was worth risking all that? And then we learn, which was a very sweet and tender moment of the show. Zeke lets him know, like, look, Pop Pop passed away. And on his anniversary, on the anniversary of his passing, my family lights a blue candle. I need my blue candle. And, you know, I'm not going to even hold you guys. I was tearing up. I think a tear might have even fell down because I... <laughs> Little Majors delivered on that. It was a very touching moment. Then we got the other man come with the, um, he, he about to go ahead on and put his stitches in for him. He like, man, I got you. So I, I'm wondering how this, this um, friendship will develop because I was low-key thinking initially, like, does the other man just kind of have a crush on Zeke? And that's why he's giving him such a hard time. So we're going to see. We're going to see if this compassion that he suddenly has for him and if it's going to develop into anything else. I don't want to see no love triangle now. We're going to see there may be a lot of firsts to ever happen on this series. So stay tuned and let's find out together. I'm really excited still about this series found. Let me know what y'all think about this latest episode. Let me know what you think about my review. And drop a red phone in the comments for your girl to let me know that you stopped by. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.